All right, so before we get started, I'm gonna make a new folder on my desktop. I'm gonna call this image search threading. You can put this anywhere. For this project, we're gonna need the threading library as well as the image search library. So I'm going to copy the image search 2015.au3 as well as the DLLs that come with it. And I'm gonna paste it in this new folder. I'm also going to go to the threading folder and I'm going to grab authread.au3. If you don't have those, you probably haven't watched the little mini series on threading or image searching. And I recommend you look in my AutoWit playlist and watch those or at least get the files for them. All right, so we're ready to go. I'm going to copy the path to this folder. I'm going to go to the AutoWit script editor. I've made a new file and I'm going to save it in the folder of the, th uh, the threading and everything that we just created. I'm gonna call this image search threading.au3. And now we are ready to go. Just got to include image search 2015.au3. And we're also going to include au thread.au3. We're gonna make four new variables. We're gonna have left, right, top, and bottom. So I changed the order. What I meant to say was left, top, right, bottom. So we've got left and top, which will be the top left corner. We've got right and bottom, which is the bottom right. So I set the variables. I'm gonna leave left and top to zero because it's gonna be the top left corner of our screen. And I grab the window spy tool by going to the, uh, pressing the start button, clicking on auto it and opening up the window information tool. Grab the finder tool, move it to the bottom right corner of the screen and you can see it's 1919 comma 1079. So essentially it's one off of the uh, display size of my screen. Now here's what's unique about this approach. I'm gonna grab the finder tool again, but this time, for example, I'm gonna look for this coordinate right down here. And if, now if we were to set left to two and top to 919, we have just resized our entire coordinate system. So it's gonna split this console into four coordinates. So rather than our desktop being that size, it's gonna be this. No, that's kind of a tangent. We're not gonna be doing that for this tutorial. I'm just saying that you can easily change where you're searching with this method. The picture I'm gonna be searching for for this tutorial series is gonna be the icon for the finder tool. And I'm gonna save this in the same folder that I have my project in because that way I don't have to uh, go searching for it or type a very long path. I'm gonna call this one.png just because it's a short name. And then I'm gonna make a new variable. We're gonna call this picture equals one.png. Now we've declared our variables. Let's go ahead and start the thread. So we're gonna do au thread, oops, underscore startup parentheses. Interesting, if you were to put this line above these variables, it wouldn't work. Any threads you tried to call that required these variables wouldn't know these variables existed because they were declared after the thread. So we're gonna go ahead and put this below all the important variables. Now let's start our image search, but we're gonna do it in a new function. So I'm gonna make a new function and I'm gonna call it chord A parentheses. And now we're gonna do our image search. So let's create our variables. We're gonna do x1 equals zero, y1 equals zero. We're gonna reassign these when we're done. Do x2 equals zero, y2 equals zero. We're also gonna need our result. So we're gonna store it in return x equals zero return y equals zero. Now let's call the image search area function result or whatever you want to call it equals image search area. I'm gonna grab our picture, which we did up top. Then we're gonna do one comma x1 comma y1 comma x2 comma y2 comma and then our return variables return x return y comma zero for zero tolerance comma zero for zero transparency in your projects you can do something different if you want to then we're going to press enter if result then we're going to do a tooltip for this one we're not going to move the mouse tooltip let's just say we found the image in chord a and quote let's do comma 
but let's display it at x1, y1, which will be the top left corner of our coordinate. So it'll display it up here, or up here, or here, or there. So we're gonna set that to x1, comma, y1, and parenthesis, sleep for 1000 like always. Else, another tooltip, error not found in chord a once again x1 comma y1 sleep for a second and if and funk save so for this we're gonna set x1 to be left which is what we defined up here we're gonna set y1 to be top so we've defined the top of our area up here and then for x2, we're going to do right minus left. We're going to put these in parentheses, and we're going to divide all that by 2. We're going to repeat the same thing here, so we're going to do parentheses, except instead of right, we're going to do bottom minus top divided by 2. The reason why we're doing right minus left is if we look at our coordinates, our left coordinate is 0. So we're not going to get anywhere with that. But if you look at our right coordinate, it's... 119 sorry 1919 super big so if we were to subtract our smaller number from our bigger number we'll be left with a whole number rather than a negative number right now left is zero but when we're dealing with our coordinate c left is going to be right here which is halfway in the middle of our screen you know so we don't want to be dealing with negative numbers let's go ahead and test it real quick we're going to call our chord a function i'm going to bring up window information we found the image so let's get rid of it make sure it works when it doesn't find it no image found cool so we've made chord a let's copy and paste this three more times so i've copied and pasted it now we have to change the values for all the other uh, functions. I'm gonna start off by replacing every word that's not supposed to be chord A with the chord that it actually is. So this is supposed to be chord B. I'll change this to chord B and I'll change these to chord B and I'm gonna continue that until we finish with chord D. So I've changed all the names of the coordinates. All that's left now is to change the regions of each coordinate. We've already set chord A, so let's go to chord B. You can choose which coordinate you want these to be, but for this tutorial, chord B is gonna be right here. That means X1 and Y1 are gonna be right here. So we're gonna have left uh, X1 be left, which is still zero, but we're gonna have Y1 change to be the same value as Y2, which we have right there. So now we set Y1 to bottom minus top divided by two, which will put it right there. And now we're gonna change Y2 to bottom. We're on to chord C now. X1 and Y1 are gonna be right here. So the top is gonna stay the top. So Y1 is gonna stay top, but X1 is in the middle of the picture. So we're gonna take this right minus left divided by two and replace it with X1. And then we're gonna set X2 to right because this is the very right side of our screen. Y2 is still gonna be bottom minus top divided by two because the bottom of this coordinate is still in the middle of the screen. Lastly, we've got our coordinate D x1 and y1 are going to be right here so we're going to copy both of these we're going to set x1 to right minus left divided by two we're going to set y1 to bottom minus top divided by two and we're going to set x2 to be right and we're going to set y2 to be bottom so i'm going to quickly test this out make sure all of our functions work it detects in chord A, move this down, change the name of the function to chord B. It detects in chord B, detects in chord C, and detects in chord D. Everything works like it's supposed to. Now we're just about done. All we have to do is call these coordinate functions in the threads. To do that, we create another variable. I'm going to call this thread A equals AU thread underscore start parentheses quote chord a and now i'm going to duplicate this three more times assign the right letter value my bad guys it's supposed to be a youth underscore start thread and then before we run the program i'm going to put a sleep right here for 10 seconds so we can see everything uh transpire let's test it out bam so we, we produced four errors i went ahead and increased the sleep time in all these functions now i've pulled up four different window spies let's go ahead and see what happens when we run the program Awesome, it detected the image in each chord. That's perfect. So I removed one of them, let's see what happens now. Perfect, so we got three of them detected, one of them not detected. I removed another one, let's try it again. Awesome, so we were detected in chord A and chord D, but not in chord B and C, just like it's supposed to. This video is getting kind of long, so we're gonna wrap it up here. In the next video, we're gonna cover how to send messages in between threads. 
Well, we have already covered that in a different series. In this, we're basically going to add a mouse movement to each one of these that are detected, and we'll make it so the program will wait until each uh, thread finishes its mouse movement before the next thread tries to move the mouse. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a good one.